For centuries, modern cinema has strived to branch itself to become a varied form of storytelling. Although the beginnings of the film industry has lacked many technical aspects during its time, it was able to spawn many compelling stories along with the influence of experimentation of the art of filming. One of these great examples is the Weimar era in Germany, which was home to Robert Wayne. Although he attempted to progress into law school in Vienna and Berlin around 1894 to 1896, Wayne had a deep love within the arts like his father and eventually jumped in the rabbit hole and began mastering performing arts as a business director than a screenwriter. His path of writing along with the association with the Meister Film Company led him towards filming several provocative movies such as The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, Raskolnikov, and Genuine. Through an overview of three of his films, Weimar proved to not only become a political statement in Germany, but also a pioneer in the art of film. Through his career from 1912 up to his death in 1938, Robert Wayne has contributed through the film industry by writing and directing several films. Many of them are lost in media, but these selected three are great cult classics and are common examples of German Expressionist films. As an art movement that spread during the 1920s, Expressionists were able to bring their exaggerated and distorted aesthetic within painting to emphasize emotional themes. But it seemed to be difficult to compress the same style into monochrome silent films that time. However, this wasn't the case for Wayne. Having a strong background of theater from his family and his experience of screenwriting and handling the Neue Vienna Bühne in 1908, Wayne was aware of how the settings and characters interconnect visually as they play along within the script. Wayne's three films were great examples of his signature mise-en-scene and brought an emotional attachment through his craft, marking them as expressionistic. The cabinets of Dr. Caligari and Raskolnikov were well-defined examples of mise-en-scene through its distorted geometric backgrounds, high contrast of lighting, and grotesque overreactive characters to portray the eerie environment and bring the audience towards his dark story. There was much attention towards the sharply angled buildings and interiors that brought a slight abnormality as we view suspicious antagonists passing through or frantic tension with an agonizing stalking through town of Caligari sleepwalking henchmen or uncontrollable hallucinations from Raskolnikov as he sleeps. Genuine also applies Wayne's formula of imagery but it differs to emphasize the protagonist genuine and her barbaric, irrational character in comparison towards the wealthy eccentric. The bunker she lives in is open and chaotic, filled with abstract shapes and stripe patterns to represent an exotic jungle that fits with her personality, while the mansion upstairs contrasted to being more orderly and plastered with geometric shapes to act civilized and cosmopolitan. Despite these remarkable visuals, what made these films stand on its own is through a common political theme. The three movies dealt with intriguing plot lines such as hypnosis, succubi, murder, and insanity. But what unifies these films is the theme of authoritarianism. Through each of these films, Wayne challenges duality of the individual and the authority that brings the viewers to question of their own corruption. One may view the high ground as having delusional or strange motives that are untrustworthy and may harm others. But one can also lack trust towards the individual, fearing the irrationality that cannot be contained without the discipline of authority. Many describe this as the father-son situation. These three films were able to convey this theme. The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari was a great example of showing this theme from the presentation of Dr. Caligari through the eyes of the protagonist, Francis. Dr. Caligari, a visiting doctor, is seen to be in a Socratic diabolical mastermind behind the series of murders within Francis' town. But we then discover that the story was only a figment of Francis' imagination, revealing that Francis was the mental patient in the care of Caligari himself bringing the viewers the question of our trust of Francis or Caligari. Raskolnikov was also able to bring the same theme but also applies to a different perspective. Raskolnikov, a penniless and depressed student from Russia, brought his experience of meeting friendly yet poverty-ridden civilians in comparison to the struggle of wealth and class to question, is it justifiable to take life if by doing so benefits humanity and rids it of a pest? His ideology converted his mind to murdering an elder pawnbroker and her sister which brought no benefits to the poor but despair and insanity due to the civilians being friends to the pawnbroker's family and suicide to escape being framed by the law. 
Raskolnikov was also in the example of one of the possibilities of unruled freedom that questions the essential use of higher authorities despite the motive of being good into society. Genuine is a completely different plot from the rest since it leads more towards a monster movie than a psychological thriller, but it was still able to bring the contrast of the individual and authority, specifically between the vamp Genuine and the rest of the characters in the film. One may bl take the blame towards Genuine for using her power of seduction for murder and dominance towards the owner, but there is also suspicion towards the owner himself. Throughout the story, he buys specifically Genuine because of her marvelous beauty that he keeps her locked from the real world. He provides her shelter and constantly feeds her, isolating both him and Genuine from the outside. The containment from society has its advantages and disadvantages, one being that it prevents Genuine from bringing her horrid cruelty towards others, but also brings Genuine to obsess over escaping. The Elder's choice of to contain her only was the main cause leading towards the rest of the story. Despite its outdated quality, Wayne's films were able to bring stunning narratives along with complexing visuals that are able to become impactful to this day. Soon afterwards, many filmmakers followed his footsteps with their own style to create a wonderful art movement within cinema, such as Fritz Lane's Metropolis. Wayne's films overall bring its own political voice along with a morbid style that I highly recommend to watch as a connoisseur.